I, as much as I would have loved to have been the one to start it, uh, no, there was definitely a really successful jazz program uh, when I took the job, but actually it was, th so three first year teachers, me included, actually joined the team for band in 2019. That was our first year, and that's me, uh, Jose Gonzalez, another assistant director, and then our percussion director, Aaron Perez. Uh, we all joined that first year in 2019, and initially the jazz band was conducted by the percussion director. It was just part of their job at, when they signed the contract. Um, but we realized really quickly that that was just a lot to ask from a percussion director considering they have 10 million other things to do. So uh, Mr. Perez actually offered me the opportunity to take over the jazz program last year uh, and that was the best decision I ever made. I have had so much fun doing it, man. It's just been such a blast. But as far as I know, a very long time to answer your original question. It's been around way longer than me, I'm sure. So uh, I think the cool thing about jazz band is everyone's job is like equally important uh, because it's it's a lot smaller in terms of instrumentation size than, than like a concert band or you know the marching band in the fall this is the biggest ensemble we have this is actually one of the smaller ensembles in terms of size um, so everyone's part is crucial with with one person missing you know it can ruin a rehearsal or ruin a performance if only one part is missing um, which sounds like a bad thing but it's a cool thing I think because that type of music is typically uh, a lot more nerve-wracking for some of those students to play because it's so exposed in such a small instrumentation. Um, so I think it's good for them in the long run, but I just love jazz music. It's the best kind of music in my opinion, <laughs> so. So your typical jazz layout is gonna be a trumpet section in the back, a trombone section in the middle, and then a sax section in the front. And then all of the other instruments in the jazz band are what we call the rhythm section. And that's gonna include your drum set player, your piano player, a guitar player, and a bass player typically. And then if you have uh, auxiliary percussion parts, sometimes there's like vibraphone and things like that. Um, but that would all just fall into the rhythm section, so. Well, uh, most of the time, the trombone section is used to like create chords and be like backgrounds for like other instruments to just go off, go, go do whatever. And as the bass trombone, I am holding the root of the chord usually, which is the most important part, because otherwise then it's just it's not a chord. Um, and I obviously will play low, sometimes it'll be really low, like stabs and stuff. And I have the only instrument that can play that low other than maybe like the berry sax, which is basically the bass trombone of the saxophone section. But I'm just kind of, I'm like the, the foundation and the baseline of the trombone section and of the, um, of the band as a whole. Um, well, number one, it's to drive the band and keeping tempo and keeping the band as one and just keeping it going, moving and growing in the song. Uh, I also complement the band's rhythms and their different styles of playing with my own stuff that I put in on the drum set and I uh, just like compliment them with like different feels that I put on the toms and the cymbals and whether their notes that they play in the style is short or long, I, it, that deciphers where I put my notes on the drum set. So we're primarily the most common uh, like woodwind instrument in a jazz band especially in a big band scene where there's lots of brass players. We bring a lot of brightness and color to the jazz scene. And uh, a lot of the parts that we have are like those lyrical parts that, you know, uh, you know, a trombone can't bust out or a trumpet has problems with, but they're, you know, they have three valves, so we have a lot of fingerings. 